Hi everybody, we are doing another Q&A today, which I am now going to rename to Ask Katie. It's a shorter hashtag, it's a better hashtag. So in future, hashtag Ask Katie. Say that five times fast. I reached out on Instagram the other day and asked you guys to leave me questions for the Q&A, and you left me almost 400. So we are not getting to all of them today. I'll get to what I can. going to try and do ones that I haven't answered before, so let's get into it. What is the worst thing about being a professional dancer? Um, probably that your life has to revolve around it, which is worth the sacrifice if you love it, if this is what you want to do. But you get one day off a week, everything is about the next day. Um, it, it becomes a very much sort of a monk lifestyle. You can't just go out and do something because you know you might hurt your feet, you might wear the wrong shoes. It's hard because it all has to revolve around what you do. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. Like I said, you get very little time off, but it is worth it, I think. But that is, it can be very difficult at times. How do you know that you found the perfect point shoe for your feet? I love the shoes I'm wearing, but I always feel like there's better shoes out there for me. That is a great question. If you guys want me to do a point shoe fitting video, let me know in the comments. But the most important thing is, number one, that they fit you. There's not a lot of gaping material. That the box is not too far up on your toes. You know what I mean? Like if here's your toes and the box comes up to here, you're not gonna be able to get over your shoe so that the box is the right length. That you can, in fact, get over your shoes with no problem. That you feel good dancing in them. If you feel like this in your shoes, Probably not a good shoe for you. Um, I, as I say all the time, guys, get professionally fitted, but you'll know. You'll feel like, oh, these look good, they dance well, they feel as good as they're gonna feel. If you feel like they don't look good, they look, I look sickled, I can't get over them, try a different shoe. What some message you would want to send to the next generation of dancers? That is a great question. Probably everything I said in my 10 secrets to be a professional dancer, it is not just about how much you can turn, how high you can jump, how high you can get your leg. It's about so much more than that. It's about being interesting. It's about having passion for it. It's about working hard to get there. You know, talent isn't enough. You've got to want it, you've got to work for it, and you've got to have a passion for it. That's what I would tell them. A lot of you ask me about audition tips. I know you have auditions coming up. January is kind of the audition season. So in the box below, I will link a podcast episode I did on auditions. Uh, I will also link a video I did on auditions, but that was like many, many moons ago, like old, old camera, not good video quality. If you want me to do an updated video, I can, but pretty much everything I have to say about auditions is in that podcast episode. So I will link that below. If you're still interested, I can redo it, but I'd probably just repeat the podcast episode in the video. So have a listen and let me know what you think. But everything about auditions is in that podcast episode. If you could go back to New York City Ballet and dance one performance, which ballet would you choose and who would you choose to be your partner? That's an amazing question. Romeo and Juliet, no hesitation, and Tyler Angle. He was one of my most frequent partners. I dance with him in all the Sleeping Beauty videos that I've done for you guys on here. Um, so Romeo and Juliet with Tyler. A lot of you have asked me to do another performance survival guide like I did the Nutcracker survival guide. Um, some of you wanted about food, some of you said can you do a Swan Lake survival guide. If you want me to, I will. Um, pretty much every performance can take on that survival guide that I did on Nutcracker, but there are different things for different performances. So I will do a performance survival guide if you would like me to, but that's a really great video pretty much for any show. I would love to see a movie or read a book about your life. Thank you. Any chance either of those will be happening anytime soon? I would love to write a book love to. Um, I feel like I'm at a point now where I could. Um, a lot of people were telling me to write a book once I left the company, but it was kind of like it wouldn't have an ending. Um, and if I did write a book, I would want it to be not just a biography because I feel like you guys already know my biography. I've done it so many videos, you know, this is what happened to me. This is my illness, blah, 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 blah. I'd want to have it be an interesting book, maybe interactive, maybe have some ballet tips and some eating tips as well as my biography. I'd really want to make it an interesting book and not just my story. Um, but yeah, any publishers out there, any literary agents, let me know. I'd love to write a book. 
as to a movie, I mean, that would be amazing too. That's a f much more far-fetched thing, but you know, either of those. So no plans currently, but I'd love to do that. Several of you ask questions about having a teacher that never pays attention to you, doesn't believe in you, doesn't correct you. Um, so when you have a teacher that is not pushing you to the point that you think you should be pushed, number one thing, talk to them. However, put it on yourself. Don't attack them. Say, look, I really want to push myself. I really want to be challenged. Could you correct me more in class? Could you be harder on me in class? Or if, they, if you don't think they believe in you, again, you can't get inside their head. You don't know that. But say, you know, I really want this as a career. What can I do? Can you push me? Can you whatever because remember guys and i've said this before this is your career nobody is going to do it for you so if you want it badly enough and you feel like you are not being challenged talk to them you know what what's the worst that can happen you know what i mean they're probably not going to say no you know so tell them address your concerns but put it on yourself but absolutely talk to your teacher do you have any highlights with dancing at new york city valley somebody somewhere i can't remember if it was here on facebook or youtube i can't remember where it was this is a brilliant idea someone suggested to me to start a video series that would be called like story time where each video i would tell you a story about while i was at new york city valley sab um, share memories, that kind of thing. If you're interested in that, let me know because that requires its own video too. Um, so like story time with Katie where I, I kind of tell you stories about what happened at New York City Ballet and stuff. Um, but my highlight with New York City Ballet was debuting both Aurora and Juliet, without a doubt. But if you want story time with Katie or whatever I'd call it, leave me a comment. Ah, I found the comment. Also, would you consider making a story time video with your favorite or least favorite example stories from your time at SAB in New York City Ballet? Yes, we will do that. Let me know in the comments. This may seem like a very strange question, but I am not in the dance or ballet world. I was wondering, when I watch videos about the typical day of professional ballet dancer, when and where do you guys shower? That is a great question. I can't speak for, speak for other companies, but in every theater I've ever been in, every dressing room has a shower in the bathroom, whether it's the small dressing rooms for the soloists and principals where they share like two to a dressing room, or the big core dressing room with all the core dancers has like four or five showers. So there are showers at the theater and any other theater I've I've guessed it in. Um, and I would remember like if I had a really long day and couldn't go home before the performance, I'd take a shower so I didn't feel gross from the day to start the show. So there are showers at the theater. What has been the biggest surprise in married life? I hope it's going beautifully. It's going wonderfully. Thank you so much. We are very happy. There haven't been any surprises in that like, uh, or uh, you know what I mean? It's not been whoa for me the the biggest surprise was having to deal with and this is just because eric is in the coast guard having to deal with hurricane harvey um and eric's schedule for that and he was there you know the the hours he had to work the stuff they had to do pulling people out of the water and dealing with all of that i mean he would come home every day like just glazed and saying, I'll never complain again, I'll never complain again. That, just watching him go through that and watching what he had to do. And as his wife, it was like, I, I had to put up with it and not say anything. You know what I mean? Obviously there were people in terrible situations, but the hours were terrible. Um, I tried to be as helpful as I could and do what I can. I mean, I took over dog duty 100%, um, but just having to go through that with a military husband specifically the Coast Guard, was very interesting. Um, and more props to Eric and all of them. That was unbelievable what they did. Have you ever met Lindy Mander Jeff or Jennifer Ringer? Lindy, they're both dancers with the New York City Ballet. Lindy left the company before I got there. Um, so I know of her. I've never met her. Jenny Ringer, absolutely. She kind of became a mentor to me towards the end while I was there. Um, was, is one of my favorite people, favorite dancers. A lot of you said, who did you look up to in your career? I looked up to Jenny. She's absolutely amazing. One of the nicest people you ever met. And yeah, she she became a mentor to me. We, had, we went out to coffee a lot. Um, I went with her the very first time I took class at Steps on Broadway. She brought me. <laughs> so, because I, for whatever reason, like, 
was at a point where I was, it was during my, the onslaught of my illness and I just felt awful and fat and gross. And she was like, no, no, you're coming. So I went with her for the first time to steps. Uh, but yeah, Jenny Ringer, love her to death. What do you like and enjoy about teaching at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts? I love it. Those kids are fabulous. My older ones especially are phenomenal. Um, I'm going to start using them on YouTube uh, to help do some more classes for you guys and technique videos and stuff so I don't have to do them all. <laughs> um, yeah, my advanced girls especially are fabulous. Like one of them was at SAB this summer. They are unbelievable. Um, even my younger levels, they have such... Um, a will to learn and they listen to everything I say and they apply it and they're always happy in class. They want to do everything like four million times. I'm like, do you want to do this again? Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's such a, a want to learn that I've never really experienced anywhere else. Um, and I think it's because I teach the trainee program and you Training program is it's not only audition based, but it is optional. So the training program has the harder schedule, or you can take the normal level classes, you know, all the way up through advanced and have an easier schedule. So it's not like everybody has to be there every day if they don't want to, but the training kids do. And so they really want to be there. They work so hard. Um, the studio is amazing. Facilities, as you guys have been seeing, I've started filming bars and technique videos there. Uh, so it's just been fabulous. Did you like the rehearsal period or performance season better? Oh, the performance season. <laughs> rehearsal period for me was kind of hard to get through because I thrived off of being on stage. I danced far better on stage than I did in rehearsals when people are sitting there with a notebook or watching you or, you know. Um, going back to confidence on the 10 Secrets video, um, when you're on the stage, there's nobody there, you know, even though they are watching, you can't see them, you can kind of just let it all happen. Rehearsals, I would beat myself up a lot, um, so I much preferred the performance season, even though it had a harder schedule, I much preferred that. How did you get into SAB, what are they looking for, and what should you do in your audition? In addition to that auditions podcast. If you guys like, a lot of you have asked me about this. If you want to make, want me to make an SAB specific video, let me know. You have a lot of homework to let me know in the comments. Um, I will do that because I get so many requests for SAB specific. The things they're looking for, everyone else is too, but maybe I could shed some light on it since I have a lot of experience with it. I've done the auditions, I've watched the auditions, all that kind of stuff. Let me know. Were you born flexible or did you have to work for it? Uh, good question. I remember struggling with my splits and I didn't get my splits till, I don't know, 12 maybe. And I didn't get my left split until long after my right split. But I was, I was born with flexible hips and a, and a flexible back. But the hamstrings I kind of had to work on, feet I had to work on. I did not have the best feet in the world. Turnout was terrible. Turnout was absolutely horrendous. So turnout, I really had to work on. Feet, uh, flexibility I had, sort of. It took me a while to actually get there, but once I did, I was Gumby. But um, turnout was my biggest problem. Many of you asked me, what is my favorite Balanchine Ballet? Favorite Balanchine Ballet was Scotch Symphony that I danced uh, with Robbie Fairchild, who, Robbie Fairchild, unbelievable. Congrats on your amazing career at New York City Ballet. He's leaving to go be a superstar on Broadway and do other things. Robbie, you're awesome. Congrats on an amazing career. But yes, with Robbie, it was very, it's basically like a 20 minute version of La Sophie, essentially. Um, that was hands down my favorite one. A lot of you want a thyroid update which I will do because I kind of have made a breakthrough in the last week. Um, so I'm going to do that separately. And if it's something that I need to tell you guys about, if you are struggling with a thyroid problem, you need to get tested for this because it kind of changed my world here. Something I've been dealing with for the last seven years might now I finally have a fix for. So I will do an updated video on my thyroid condition, but that deserves its own own video. Man, you guys ask such good questions. I feel bad that I can't get to all of them, but have you ever torn a muscle? I haven't torn a muscle, but I've torn three ligaments on the outside of my right foot twice. Um, once at SAB and maybe three 
three times. No, torn them twice, sprained it within that three times. Um, on the outside of my foot, one was during Suki Shore's class at SAB. I came down wrong from a Balané Batu crunch. Um, the second time was in rehearsal for Who Cares. I was supposed to dance the pink girl in Who Cares, who does the man I love and fascinating rhythm. And during the rehearsal for the solo, she had this, she has this big manege where she does like PK turn, PK turn, and the little jump. And I came down from the jump wrong. Speaking of Robbie Fairchild, Robbie was across the room and heard it, saw me go down. And Robbie had to literally carry me out of the studio down to the the um, street, put me in a cab, and send me to the <laughs> send me to the doctor because I couldn't walk. So thanks, Robbie, for that one. Okay, couple more questions. A lot of you asked me about shoulders and shoulder blades. How do I keep my shoulders down? How do I pull my shoulder blades in? Um, think of everything coming, your arms and everything coming from your back. If you use your shoulders, they go up. If you make a first position like using your shoulders and just your arms, your shoulders go up. But if you think of first position coming from your back, your shoulders will stay down. Um, also shoulder blades in, think of pinching a pencil between those shoulder blades. Yeah, like in second position, you should feel like you're pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades. And it's also about breathing and not letting it, you know, your, our shoulders tend to come up when we get tense. So it's about relaxing the neck, it's about breathing, being conscious of breathing while you're dancing, um, and thinking more of your back than your shoulders. Um, I have a posture video many moons ago, I'll link it for you guys. But um, if you think about your back, that will help. Okay, last question. Another very popular general correction. Um, this kind of sums it up. How do you make the transition from being in the core to having a solo? How do I have confidence to do a solo? How can I believe in myself to do a solo? Um, number one thing, remember, you were given the solo, so somebody believes you can. You know what I mean? They would not give you a solo if they didn't think you were ready for it. Believe me on that one. It's like I've talked about before. Teachers will not cast you if you are, you are not ready because it will not benefit you. So when you're doing a solo, if you've been moved up, it's because somebody believes in you. So take on that responsibility and be, be like, okay, somebody believes in me, let me prove them right. You know what I mean? Um, have confidence in yourself. View this as an opportunity. This is how you're going to get seen. This is how you're going to improve is by having the weight of a solo on your shoulders. So go for it, you know, and it's like same with anything you do. It's never going to be perfect. So go ahead and get that out of your brain. Nobody's perfect and just do your best and enjoy what you're doing. If you get so tense about it and forget the joy of it in the first place, it's not going to go well. So remember, somebody had faith in you. Somebody believes you can do it. Tell that story, be that character, and know that it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay, because nobody's perfect, okay? Guys, I wish I could get to every single one of these, but like I said, you left me almost 400 comments. So, um, can't get to all of them. Maybe I'll come back to this reference the next Q&A, and I'll just go right from here if I missed your question. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. I'll try and do Q&As more often. I know you guys enjoy them. If you missed my Arabian commentary video, it's right down there. You can click it to watch. I am so close to 100,000 subscribers, you guys. I cannot wait. Um, and I have something very, very, very special and exciting coming at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.